What's good guys, welcome back. Um, so today we are at an office block um, where we was doing some work a few months ago and we got asked to look at some outside lights. So we ran a few tests, the circuit had been disconnected by another Sparky a while ago who, who couldn't work out what the crack is. Um, I think he could, I think he just didn't want to work to be honest. But um, yeah, we, um, we ran some tests, it sort of failed every test, insulation and, and continuity. So, um, yeah, we, we started looking at the lights themselves and it, they're these sort of bollards around a, a, a car park. Um, and they're all, for, you take the, the, the caps off, the, the covers, and they're just full up of ants' nests completely inside. So it's amazing actually what ants can do. But um, yeah, like six or seven of them are like that. So until we get those cleared, um, we can't really, you know, start bailing out the circuit properly and trying to, you know, ascertain what the problem is i'm hoping it's these ants nests anyway a lot of the connections within the lamppost are exposed uh, covers are missing and stuff um and a lot of the earthing for like the the steel wire on the uh, you know on the cables is just like bonding clamps um and the arms are just in free air so it's not a proper job anyway um it makes it susceptible to stuff like this so we're basically going to remove the posts uh, redo the connections someone else is coming to remove all the ants as well and stuff so yeah we'll uh, we'll show you that hopefully it's an interesting one before we get into the video i just wanted to mention today's video sponsor uh, tradeify so tradeify is a job management software i've been using it myself for a few weeks now um, and it's really really good um it you know you can quote on it invoice on it um track jobs uh, do reports on jobs make quote templates for repetitive work um, get a real handle on your business a real handle on what's going on um, and get you really really organized as well um, it also holds you accountable for a lot of stuff and, and your and your customers and your clients as well so you know it, it makes you really really organized and um, yeah I've recently gone back uh, self-employed well I've gone limited but very very similar and um, yeah it helps me a lot basically get back into that world and stuff so yeah um, there's a free trial I'll put the link in the description to that and if you like the software if you want to carry on using it then um, I've got a discount code as well um, residual so use that code residual and it'll give you 50% off three months um, so yeah you know that gives you plenty of time to get into the new swing of things adapt to how it um, how it makes you work because it is a, it is you know a bit of a learning curve it is a bit different um, but it's bet it's for the better you know um, you've got to do more to be more organized but this certainly helps you and, and makes it easy so yeah go check it out um, right we're gonna go inside now we'll have a look at the mains make sure it's still disconnected um, how we found it last time I'll start showing you some of these bollards um, we've got to probably pick one that's not got an ant's nest in so that we can get into it and see how it actually gets removed off the base we'll go do that and then we'll start showing you some of these um, these ant networks that have been built but yeah let's uh, let's get to it right so I'm just in the mains room now um, this is the old board federal electric um, board that um, feeds the outside light so that's the breaker for it it is or it should be disconnected within here so I'm just going to um, turn that off have a little look in there um, this is the contactor which controls the supply to this board as well it's got an override because um, this is just all outside lighting basically they've uh, bolted on a timer to it as well so yeah we're just gonna make sure that's disconnected um, this is where we're gonna be testing our feed end as well a lot of the time so we'll be in and out of here but uh, yeah I'll get this unscrewed and um, we'll, we'll just verify that it's still all off Feed to the boards off, crank that on, and 
that feeds a board call. So with that off and with the timer off, that won't come live. Um, I'm going to keep the main switch off anyway. Um, and of course, yeah, that's our circuit. So it's been um, it's been left disconnected still. So that's good. Um, there are other circuits still connected, um, but yeah, we're not too worried about them. They're not the ones that we're working on today. So yeah. Um, going to go out now, um, start stripping some bollards off and, and getting our bearings on the circuit and how it's wired um, and then yeah hopefully once it's all sorted we can put this back into this uh, this 3671 and um, yeah do a minor works on it and get it all on and verified so yeah let's go outside now. Right so we've just got this one removed as you can see there they've took one of the armoreds i think it is um a replacement armoured through the side here so unfortunately i'm gonna have to reuse that because i can't get into this base and um, it goes all the way down so yeah um that's gonna get glanded into this whisker box um on this one i'm gonna have to cut this off just because we won't be able to slide the post back on but the others will try keep it in that will go on there um both armoreds glanded in and then in there's just a little flex which obviously get put away into the top of this as well. Redo all the connections because this is how we're finding them, just all exposed. Um, obviously this, this one's got no nest in it, but the other ones have. So that's what's shorting them all out. They've got these little fuses in as well, but um, yeah, we're just gonna do whisker boxes. Um, it's got, obviously got a fuse at the board. So do away with all that gubbins really. And um, yeah, just put a nice sealed box in. So even if these are gonna get created and stuff anyway, but even if they do get in, they'll struggle to get into this whisker box. So yeah, that's the plan. So. So this is one of the bad ones, you can see it's completely full up with ants, so we've got that bolt out now, we're going to have to get in there Jamie and unscrew them so that we can lift that off and then um, the exterminator is going to come and vac all the, all the ants away. So we've just got this one off, that is the nest down there look, hundreds of them, they're f***ed off as well look, they've got the right ump, look at all the eggs. Right, so this one, there's another one that's full up. So, bang a load of oil on here. Look at them all dropping out, hundreds of them. Right, 
Right, so again, we're gonna get this one all vacked out and then, um, yeah, we'll get the connections out so we can lift the bollard off. So this one's being a bit of a pig. some oil actually penetrating into there and then um, hopefully we can bring this one back we've already stripped one well Jamie's already stripped one of them got this um, Vito pop out of the OTMC but I haven't found a use for it yet so for now I like to use it to store bolts and stuff on jobs like this yeah that one's done they're hoovering out that one that one we've got off so I'm now going to go back to the one that Jamie stripped and see uh, <laughs> see if we can bring that back right so um, we're back to this one I tried to film the process but um, I'd like the facilities management guy and stuff like that so yeah just couldn't really film but this is what we're we're doing so um, yeah we have to take it through the side and in um, they're all put away in there and then we've got a 2.5 flex 4 core and then that'll be long enough to be re remade off into there just because the flexes within the within the bollards themselves aren't um, aren't long enough so yeah I'm just gonna bang some ideal connectors um, on the end of this because before we get all of these posts reseated and the the bottoms filled then we'll we'll liven it all up make sure we're happy then we'll sit all the bollards on again um and yeah give it a test after that but we don't want to sort of get all these back on everything sealed up i need to find one of these isn't made off right or one of the cables is failed or whatever so um yeah that's where we're at now that's all um all ready to go i'm just going to move on to one over there now um one of these the screw rounded off the grub screw that's in here so i don't know what we're going to do on that one we did take it easy with the the impact wrench and oiled it um but even so it um it wasn't having it so you have to drill it out or come up with something on that one luckily it's not one of the ones of the ants nests in so it's not actually um it's not you know majorly bad obviously the connections are still poorly made off but they're not sort of sodden and um and uh being exposed to like those external influences but we still want to sort it out if we can so i don't know what we're going to do there but that'll, that'll be interesting um i'll probably show you the full process on the next one just to give you um an idea of what we're doing um now that matey boy's sort of not around so um yeah i'm gonna move all the gear over and we'll get started on uh, on number two this is number two um, this is one of the ones with all the connections exposed so um, I'm going to get rid of this bar, disconnect these from that um, connection plate. This one did have an abandoned nest in it but there's a few ants just uh, milling around. So um, yeah that's why we're sort of doing all of them. Um, this was the, the earthing I was on about, it's just not ideal really, it's just got corrosion written all over it. Um, but yeah, so we'll get these out, we'll remove this, um, then we'll get our whisker box um, opened up, we'll get the glands into it first, I'll show you all of that, make the armoured off, um, and then this one, the flex will probably need extending as well again, so um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get cracking. So these are completely corroded. Why are you doing it? Over there, I think, mate, still. Get this off. So, yeah, you can see um, they're in a bad way. Just completely corroded, um, asking to sort of have problems there. So I'm going to remove these clamps um, and then uh, start stripping these armours. So we'll just get these uh, these clamps off and out of the way. Thank you. 
so so we've got two knockouts here so we'll just get them cracked through So we're using these earthen nuts, piranha nuts, whatever you want to call them, by SWA. Um, <clears throat> they're quite cool actually. So they come with a grub screw on, so you can obviously lock the, the earthen nut onto the to the gland. And then they've also got this screw here to obviously get a you know a ring crimp, an eye crimp onto it, um, so that you can fly lead off of it. This side is serrated as well, um, so it's good for like metal enclosures because it sort of cuts in, takes the paint off, just to ensure great connection to the enclosure as well. We're just going to do the flat surface down, just because because in my experience these just chew up the boxes unnecessarily and obviously they're plastic so we don't really need that that added value um, and then we're gonna put the glands in first um, I do do this sometimes anyway just because it makes life easier um, but to be honest the reason I'm doing it this way um, now is because it's a bit too tight to the the edge of the box so um, it's going to be hard to sort of twist that on afterwards um, but yeah if you put it in beforehand it's, um, it's nice and easy so yeah that's going to get twisted in there give it a few cranks up I've done that the wrong way after so I wouldn't do it that way just spin that round there we go and then um, yeah we'll get that tightened up Grips in a sec, but for now we'll just get this one on as well. Um, just try and get that out too, just because they get in the way and end up falling where you don't want them to fall. So I always tend to take these out. It's just a job trying not to lose them, especially um, outside in places like this. But yeah, so we'll slide that one in again and get that in um, and then you basically you know it's no different to the normal process but you're just glanding into the box um, I do sometimes do it in like fuse boards and stuff as well just because um, it works better but here obviously I'm forced to do it right, so they're nice and tight and now I'm also just going to probably do the um, the grub screws and maybe fire an earth across as well. In fact, I'm going to try and uh, spin this one because that has just got no chance. Let's just get this tightened up with uh, the proper tool for the job now. Well, I say the proper tool, this is a Torx, Torx set by CK, but a lot of the time they fit uh, on the smaller ones anyway. Um, right. So that's ready. I'm now just going to make up the little fly leads as well, just to get that out of the way. So got SWA crimper and then uh, a little dish I can pack out with my crimps in. So we'll strip these back. Get one of these on each end. Screw them in, and we'll snip them afterwards. Right. 
then we've done most of our prep now um, which should make life easier these are in the way a little bit but um, it's more fiddly I find trying to do this once it's all in there um, and you're trying to put it all away these armors are stripped so obviously that's corroded but I do want to keep as much length as possible so we want to try and go I guess. Get this clamped on. Go, okay, yeah, and then we'll start rotating. This tool does get a lot of um, a lot of hate, and I love using a junior as much as the next man, but this is a lot neater. A common misconception with it as well is that you have to keep tightening it up every few turns but it's actually self-tightening that's what CK told me anyway so you should just keep firing it round um, the only way it might need to tighten is if you don't set it up correctly the first time but it's not that hard to set up to be honest with you I just want to give it a good 20 turns or something generally the sweet spot there we go just unscrew it um, another thing which does happen to be fair is this knob commonly falls off um, but what I did was I just bonded it in there with something I can't remember what it was something from sight but um, yeah this always falls off. I know loads of people say it has, but I just sort of shuffle loads of something in there and stuck it back on, and it's been good as gold ever since. So now, get this off. And uh, start peeling these arm rings off. neat cut around the armoured um, and that's what I like about the tool so that's one I'm now just gonna score this one just to mark it get it out of the way do the same Too tight. And then we'll just spin him round. Two armors. So now we want to get the shrouds on. Size them up. Like that. Get them. Now we'll cut that one again. Out there. Peace. 
slid on. Luckily there's a lot of length on these because even the copper's sort of got some corrosion going on. Um, so we should be able to strip that back until we got some bright wire again. And then uh, that'll be a bit better, won't it? Now we're gonna get the bases of the glands on. These uh, CW glands, probably familiar with them, but they've um, basically just got an additional part which involves this rubber gasket, olive, and um, that obviously compresses around the PVC and just stops any ingress. Um, a lot of the time you see them poorly made off and you'll see that rubber gasket <laughs> tightened around the um, the armorings rather than the uh, rather than the actual the actual PVC, but yeah, it's just people not making them off properly. So um, a good rule of thumb's a thumbnail, but with these ones you really want to be on the lower side of about 20 mil, because um, otherwise that's where that problem stems from. Um, so yeah, I'm literally just going to do. I mean, that's about yeah just under 20 mil on both of these there we go get that off Cool, so now we're just going to do a bit of that, just to free up the arm rings, ready to receive the gland, and then we'll slide our box on. I'm actually going to ring these as well beforehand, so by the time our gland's there, we want to be about here. Um, so yeah, and then I can comfortably cut that about there now as well, same with this one. About there. Okay. And then slide these on. where it gets a little bit fiddly but it's all in the preparation as you can see we're ready to go so now he's just want to tighten on get them just finger tight for now just so I can mess around with this one as well again Get that one on too. There we go. So now I just want to tighten these onto the, onto the base of the gland. Just one. Just bring these all the way off. So look, I haven't even got any armour in showing there um, on them, and they are—they're not going anywhere. So now I'm just going to tighten these compression compression bits up. 
Again, finger tight most of the way and then just a couple of cranks with the grips afterwards. You don't want to go too mad on them as well, just because um, you can buckle the olive, buckle the washer. So, so yeah, and then it's obviously not going to do much. So yeah, they're both nice and tight. We can then slide our boots up. With a bit of a twist, and there you have it. Um, so these are ready to be put away. Um, so now, I'm gonna strip them all. They're all pretty good, but that one's still a bit dirty, but it is what it is at the end of the day. Right, so just get some connectors on them now. <laughs> no, just having a lie down. <laughs> right. So, that's ready now. Um, I'm just going to knock out one of these 20s in the top for a stuffing gland, get a meter's worth of flex in, um, and then, um, yeah, make them, make them off and we're, we're pretty much done. Um, so I'll just go grab some flex. Right, so... Get this lot stripped. Get my uh, snub nose in and just knock that 20 mil out. Grab a stuffing gland. Tighten that up. Oh, perfect timing as well. It looks like my brother's here. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Living the dream. Oh, I'll, see that. Right, I'll catch you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> He's um. I don't. I don't know. Go check on him. So that's nice and tight. Um, I'm gonna pull these off. Ready to go in here. I'm gonna put the black down to earth. Um, yeah, it's definitely overkill, especially in this situation, but it's not being used, so we'll, uh, we'll earth it, why not? I'm not going to sheaf it, um, sleeve it, because we're not using it as an earth. It's just being dumped down to earth because it can be, basically. Um, I'll bang that in there, and I'm just going to go grab some blue sleeve in and then put that away into there. Sweet. So then these can all get folded in here now. We're happy that there's a much better connection. Um, it's far better than it was. We'll pop the lid on, screw that up, we'll get some connectors on the end of this ready for our dead testing. And then, uh, yeah, we'll probably get the other few done and then jump back on camera to show you uh, us testing it all out, belling it all out, and then um, reseating all these, all these bollards as well. Yeah, I guess 
what is it? Guy ads. the other bolt out? It's more than one? Nah, sir. Right, there's no bolt there. Got that armour there, so you might want to favour going this way. That's it. Seat it back down, so just disconnect that armoured and then I'll, I'll try to get that armoured out of your way. <sighs> that one comes up. Big flathead, bro. Have you got one? No. Uh, there's one over by my where I am. Should lift up. There we go. Sweet. So um yeah, that just wants to go back in the side. Obviously, you have to get through before you land it off, and then um remove that bar so it's out of your way. That's the old armoured, so just lock that off, but leave it so it's still accessible, and then um yeah. We'll have to do something down there. Maybe we'll try and get another bolt in or something. Or we'll just put a really big self tapper through there. Yeah, yeah. Do your job on it. Sweet. Right, so this is another one. Um, I won't show you it all because you've, you've seen it, but this is just testament to why this is just pants. So look at the corrosion in the steel there. So I've had to chew this off as some tin snips because it's seized, but um, yeah. Look at that, I mean that armour in there is snapped off. Snapped off due to corrosion. Like from the other way. <laughs> Literally peeling off. Um, so this one, I'm going to slowly peel this back as far as I can. Just until I get to some steel which is in good nick. But, <sighs> you know, it might not be. It might not be till quite low. So we'll just have to see. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd show you why that's a bad idea and why um, yeah it would have never have worked to be honest with you um. right so I'm just going to very carefully run this down here so we can take it back a bit further so it's not too bad actually um, not too bad at all obviously the corrosion has literally stopped 
um, stopped where the, uh, the outer sheath and the powders helped it out. So I'm going to gland it off there, start glanding it off there. Um, hopefully this one's about the same because we have got the same issue. Right, so yeah, we've brought that back a bit. Obviously, that's not to say that the, the damp hasn't come down this far. It, um, it clearly has, but the, the rusting process hasn't started this far down. Um, so yeah, this one um, will hopefully be about the same. And then uh, yeah, we'll get this one made off. I won't show you the rest of it because you've obviously already seen it. But yeah, we'll get this one made off. Jamie's just tidying up somewhere. Um, Ian's over there now doing the last one, the one that we couldn't remove. Um, and then yeah, we'll start testing up and hopefully liven up the circuit. Right, so we're back in the main room now. Um, I'm gonna get this cover off, get the tester out. Um, so we'll be doing insulation resistance and uh, continuity. The main thing we're worried about really is the continuity because we had it between everything we shouldn't have it between, um, which was of course why it was banging out. Uh, the insulation resistance was poor as well, but it's not in the greatest state anyway so that's probably why um, a lot of the loads were connected as well but we didn't have a we didn't have a dead short but we um, yeah it was bouncing all over the place so. still quite damp I hope. Um, we'll see when we do insulation resistance. Um, so we'll set it on to 500. We obviously you might get something in between here because we've got connected loads. Okay, so I'm going to 
dead short between neutral and earth. Everything else was um, over a mega ohm, so nothing to worry about. Obviously not great, but um, yeah, you know, nothing, nothing to really worry about considering the cables and the state you saw it in. That's um, that's probably why. So now we're gonna see if it comes on. Um, obviously, it's not on an RCD, so that neutral earth fault won't be an issue. Um, we'll just have to see um, see what we do about that. Um, obviously, there are a lot of other lights still on the circuit. We just got the real bad ones, so we'll. Um, you know, we might have to start taking a look at some of them, but the main thing was to try and get the circuit to just come back on. Um, there's obviously a bit more TLC needed elsewhere on the circuit, so. Get that into there. Top around there for now. So we want to have you on. We want to override the photo cell, so that's humming away in there. And then put that breaker on, and it's held on. Um, yeah, we'll give it a sec, but it seems pretty good. So now we're going to go outside. We'll um, visually see if the lights are functioning, if they're working. Um, we'll then start putting the bollards back together, and um, yeah, we'll have a look at what else is connected and what we can do about that earth. Um, that earth really. So yeah, we're going to do that now. Right, so these floods are on. Um, that bollard there is on. It's all sort of come back to life, which is good. So now we're going to turn it off. Um, we'll get these reseated and um, put away properly. And then, um, yeah, we can call it a day. Happy days. Cleared the fault, cleared the ants. Um, we're just going to um, fill them full of foam as well. It's not concrete, we got it wrong. This guy is going to fill them full of foam. So we'll do that and then uh, we'll get out of here. Right, so we're all done. Um, they're all back on. Well, most of them are back on. That one didn't come back on. That one's really dim. There's a few others that, um, that haven't come back on. But the circuit's re-energised um, and it's in a lot better state uh, for continued use now, which was the objective. Obviously, um, the work today, now it's back on, has uh, made apparent that a bit more TLC is needed on some of the fittings. Some of them need swapping out for new and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to get the circuit on so we could yeah start working from that point really um that earth reading didn't clear up but like i say we'll be coming back so we just need to have a deeper look at some of these fittings and stuff like that um obviously it's not on the rcbo so it's um it's not a problem but it's just not ideal so yeah um i hope you've enjoyed the video uh, as always if you haven't already please like subscribe and hit that bell button really supports what i'm trying to do um check out the tradeify link as well and use code residual for 50 percent off three months uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.